This is Ali, a 17-year-old Dartmoor Cross mare who was sent to us for an assessment and training. One of the problems she had was a fear of alpacas. At home, she was going past them when she panicked, leaping and jumping into the air, and later on, in her stable, sweating and shaking. A vet visiting her owner's yard sedated her because she was in such a state. Today, we have brought Ali to a field where some alpacas live. Although her owner was concerned that training her to cope with alpacas would bring out the same reaction, in our opinion, if a pony has a fear of something, it needs to be worked on, because you do not know when it may manifest itself. It could also grow into a bigger problem. For example, if Ali was afraid of driving past a field of alpacas, she could lose her confidence going past a field of cows, or sheep. This could potentially cause a big accident if her owner was taking her out somewhere and sheep had been put in a field that she had to go past. A lack of confidence in one area can lead to problems showing up in another area. For example, a horse frightened of motorbikes might then take fright if a car with a similar sounding revving engine comes past, or it could start shying at cyclists. For this reason, we believe it is best to make horses safe, confident and happy wherever they are driven and whatever they encounter. And this is why we believe in exposing horses that we train to lots of different situations and hazards. You are not only training them for when things go right, but for anything that could go wrong, as this makes them better prepared. Just as horses that are frightened of lorries should be trained to be happy around them, so horses that are frightened of alpacas or cows or donkeys, or pigs, should also be trained to accept them happily. Not only will it make your driving safer, it will also help your horse by keeping them safe from danger because they are less likely to run away in blind terror. Here we have tied her up at the gate to show that she is happy watching the alpacas with no driver on the reins to restrain her and nobody to put their foot on the brake. This shows she is happy to stand still simply because she has been asked to, and she is relaxed even with the alpacas nearby. Bear in mind we do not have control over the alpacas' movements as they are loose in the field. This shows the level of confidence we have in the training we have done with Ali, in that we know that she will not panic even if the alpacas move. Notice how she is standing with her leg at rest and is even confident enough to put her head down and graze. Although she is tied up, she is on a loose rope, which means that if she was afraid, she could pull away or dive forwards or backwards. However, we know that she will not do this. We have always believed that horses should be able to be driven happily around other animals. We have heard, for example, of people refusing to drive their horses at certain shows because there will be donkeys present and they think their horse might panic. In our opinion, that shows a lack of training or confidence and skill on the part of the driver and that the horse in question should be exposed to donkeys and be trained to accept them happily rather than having his fear indulged. Trying to keep your horse away from everything that might frighten it is not always practical or indeed possible. For example, a donkey owner could have bought that empty field that you drive past. One day you go past there is no donkey as usual and the next day one has suddenly appeared in the field. If this is your only route out of your yard, your horse either has to cope happily and go past it, or you will be unable to drive out safely until you have trained it further. If the driver is worried about how the horse will behave, and needs to sedate it, or put it in a stronger bit so they think they have hold of it if it panics, more training should be done. Ali's owner was also feeding her a calming supplement, but we are not giving it to her, as we do not think this is the right thing to do, because she does not need it. There are some people who sedate their horses before going in the show ring, in order to control them better, as they cannot then react to the excitement. But we feel that the key to better control with any horse or pony is training and not chemical sedation. As you can see, we are driving Ali in a soft, flexible rubber snaffle and not a strong curb bit.
that amplifies the amount of pressure the driver puts on the reins. People are often willing to accept different levels of fear from their horses. For example, some people refuse to drive out on bin day because their horse is frightened of the dustbin lorry or shies at the bins left standing on the side of the road. Rather than accept this as normal behaviour, we think it's a good idea to train your horse to be used to dustbin lorries and bins so that if anybody ever put the bin out on the wrong day, or you did not realise that the council had changed the day that the dustbin lorry would be collecting them, you are not taken by surprise and end up causing an accident because the horse panics, all for the sake of doing a bit of training beforehand. If your horse was frightened of its feed bucket or a water trough, you would not stand by and watch him starve, but do your utmost to convince him that the bucket and troughs are safe. This should surely be the same for anything that frightens your horse out on the roads, and it will also help you have a better partnership with your horse, because the more things you can do together, the more your horse will trust you, and the more you will trust your horse. We consider it a standard part of every horse's training to get used to being caught and having a head collar passed over their nose and behind their ears, just as we ensure we spend time teaching horses to lead on a lead rope properly from their field up to their stable, to pick its feet up for the farrier, or to be picked out, regardless of whether you drive barefoot or shod, to accept rugs going over its back, all of which can be very frightening for a horse the first time it is done. Yet we persevere because we consider this as the basics, the absolute minimum that a horse should be able to do, for example, if it needed emergency handling or care. Therefore, why is it not the same to consider traffic training or getting them used to donkeys as a vital part of their basic education? We need to raise the standards of what we consider to be a good, safe horse and to widen their basic training curriculum so they are better prepared for life ahead. And just because the horse is young does not mean that this training cannot be done with them. With all these things mentioned, over time we accept that the horse will be able to cope with it, for example, having a head collar put on without moving their head away, having a rug put on without flinching, and having their feet picked up without resisting. They become part of the horse's daily routine and nothing to be frightened of. We feel this should be the same with encountering large lorries, or alpacas, or driving over motorway bridges, or going into puddles. Horses can be taught to overcome their fears. We do not expect Ali to be frightened of this man-made post and rail fence, but in this case it's not a natural object, and not one she would encounter out in the wild. You would therefore expect her to be more frightened of this than you would another animal, such as a pig, for example. Next, we drive Ali along the fence and move her closer to this alpaca. Notice how Barry doesn't have his foot on the brake. When we ask her to move forwards, she does not shy, jump in the air, or swing round to try and run off the other way. Notice as well how she is not sweating in fear or from exertion. Even when the alpacas are moving about, you can see that Ali is happy to stand still on a loose rein with no one at her head to calm her. Often, a horse can learn fear from its handler or driver. For example, many people who send horses to us for traffic retraining are actually themselves scared of driving out in traffic. This means they are not capable of giving the horse the reassurance or confidence it needs in testing circumstances. Ali has confidence in us on the reins, which means that when we introduce her to the alpacas, she listens to us, and as we are behaving as if there is nothing to be frightened of, she is not frightened either. As you can see here, she has her leg at rest again and is standing still on a loose rein. This attitude is also important when retraining horses that are frightened of traffic. As we consider driving in traffic to be normal and are ourselves not frightened of it, so the horses become confident too. We then turn Ali around and ask her to face the alpacas from a different angle. Notice she is happy to go right up to the fence and stand still on a loose rein again. We are also asking Ali to face the alpacas head on 
to show that it is not the fact that the blinkers are preventing her from looking at them, as she walks past the field, but that she is happy to remain calm and relaxed, even when she has a clear view of them right in front of her. We also take Ali past the field at different speeds, to show that she is not trying to run away from them, even when she is working at a faster pace, and that she can be driven past them just as easily at the trot as she can at the walk. More videos showing the other work we have done with Ali and her owner on the reins can be viewed on her playlist.